Okay, we're gonna begin with a few postural stretches before we start our level five postnatal cardio burst. We're gonna need our foam roller and we're gonna roll out our hip flexors. The hip flexors are located around the groin. I'll show you so you can see that the area you wanna roll. You'll roll one leg at a time, starting with your tighter or dominant leg. And you can have your non-dominant leg out to the side in a butterfly position where the knee is on the floor and you can pad pat it with, you know, some cushions or roll your mat up so that it's not, there's not a lot of pressure. And as you roll into this area, just make sure you're not pushing your belly out, that your belly's firming in towards the spine. You're pushing down into your forearms actively, engaging the lower abs and working into that tissue that can be pretty sticky and tight. Make sure you're exhaling the air out. Inhaling laterally with the belly braced in towards the spine, working on those Kegels with each exhale, lifting in and up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee. And another few breaths here. And let's move to the non-dominant leg. Walking forward and back, finding spots. You can do a little circular motion. Walk, crawling forward and back. Just find the, the area that needs the most attention and see if you can breathe into it without allowing the belly to relax down because we don't want to put pressure on the low back. So belly pulls in like you're putting on a tight pair of jeans, actively lifting in and up on those muscles that stop your stream of pee to recondition the lower pelvic floor. Just another two full inhales and exhales, bracing the low belly in and up. And let's slowly make our way over to a wall to stretch out the front of our shoulders. So we're gonna bring one arm, face the wall, bring your dominant arm into a high V, keep a soft bend in the elbow, and go ahead and twist away from that arm, stretching out the anterior delt. Breathe here, inhale one, and exhale one. Inhale two, exhale two, inhale three, Exhale, three, and let's switch sides. Going to the other side, twisting away from the arm, hold it here, inhale one, breathe, and exhale one. Inhale two, wall V stretch, exhale two. Inhale three, exhale three, and let's let that go. We're gonna set up, so, um, it'd be my advice if you have plantar fasciitis, shin splints, or diabetes to wear tennis shoes. We're gonna set up our stair stepper with two levels. So it'll be the higher, higher level for level five. So I'm gonna give you a moment to set the stair stepper up to put your green loop band around your outer thighs to grab your purple loop band for your upper body. You can put those sneakers on. I know it takes a second if you're using a stair stepper to make sure that the risers are secure and that when you step up it's not going to shake because they're on properly so take that time set yourself up for success so our breaks for this level are only 20 second recoveries so the loop band goes on your thighs all the way above the knees and we're going to bring the we're going to bring the purple loop band around our wrists keeping our elbows bent we're gonna be traveling up and over the stair. If you're using regular stairs, you'll be stepping onto it in the frontal plane, stepping up and down. So profile to the stair. So standing profile to the stair, you're gonna step up and down. So going up and down. And as you go up, the arms go overhead. So arms go overhead and you pull out on that band and you keep going. So if you're on stairs and not on the stair stepper going up and over, You'll switch sides when I let you know to do that, but you don't need to do it yet. Stay on this side, get comfortable with the movement, either up and over or up and down. Now the arms lower and lift. They lower, the elbows bend and you lower them and then they lift. So the band is right in front of the face and then they go up. So I don't want the arms extended out because that's a little too much pressure on the front of the shoulders. Keep that going. Go ahead and switch sides if you're on stairs. If you're on a stair stepper, you don't need to because you're going up and over on each side. Make sure your legs are perfectly parallel. And also that you're looking up a little higher than I level, finding something to focus on as you go up and down, keeping your hips square. Okay, this is our first exercise. 
Grab your five pound weight for our second exercise. You'll hold it at your chest. We're gonna do up and around. So you're gonna start profile to your stair and then you're gonna step up onto it square to 12 o'clock. So if you're at three o'clock, you go to 12 o'clock and then you come back down on nine o'clock. So it's just up and around. So we step up onto it the normal way and then back down the other way, up and around. Keep breathing as you're doing this. You'll alternate sides so the leg closest to the stair is the leading leg and the arms are going to press overhead every time you step up onto that stair. Keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. Just learning the movement. And one more time. Okay, our final exercise. We'll need our red loop band and our five pound weight. Start with the weight in your dominant hand. Take your hands through that red loop band so it's around your wrists. You'll pull out on it. Your arms are going to go up into scaption where the wrists are slightly below the shoulders when you step up onto the stair. So if you're right-handed, your left leg leads. If you're left-handed, your right leg leads. So the opposite leg steps up and then the other leg steps up. Arms come up and then the same leg that stepped up first goes down. Correct. And so we're leading with the opposite side of the loaded side. Up and down. So I'm left-handed, so I'm going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. If you're right-handed, you're going left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now, don't get momentum going with the arms. Pull out on that band. Feel the abductors of the arms, the triceps, the posterior delts. Make sure the wrists don't go above the shoulders. Plug the shoulders down. You can switch sides if you haven't just to feel what the other side feels like. Make sure you're not dropping your focus each time. That's not great for the neck. Lift the chin. Engage the neck flexors. Keep your focus up a little higher than eye level. And keep pulling out on that band, feeling the abductors of the arms, feeling the abductors of the legs, rebuilding those hamstrings, lateral hamstrings. Excellent. Okay, we know our exercises. Grab a sip of water. I'm just going to demo the first one again so that you're familiar with it. We had the purple loop band around the wrist and we're just going up and over or up and down if you're on a regular stair. Stay on one side for the full minute and then our next minute you'll switch sides if you're on a stair. Up and over you're going to do the same side because you're going to hit each side. Okay, setting up, counting you in. Five, four, three, two, here we go. One minute on the clock. Up and down. One of the biggest things I see is the creeping shoulders. So plug those shoulders down. See how engaged you can get your upper back here. As you pull out on that band, you'll feel the arms usually, but if you can think about the back ribs puffing back behind you to the wall, just engaging your shoulder blade anchor more, that's going to be great to combat kyphosis as you're breastfeeding. Keep the chin lifted. Keep your gaze soft and a little higher than eye level, or even if you're not breastfeeding, Perhaps you're carrying your baby a lot and that's causing some rounding in the front of the shoulders and we want to combat that. Hang in there just another 20 seconds. Make sure that you're stepping onto a perfectly parallel leg, not turning the foot out from the ankle joint, keeping the knee soft. Don't lock the knee at the top. Almost there, 10 seconds. Push through it. Make sure that focus is up higher than eye level, counting you down. Five, four, three, two, one. One, take your 20 second break. It's going to go by real fast. Don't take the band off your thighs. You can take the band off the wrist for a second. Grab water, take a stretch. I'm going to tell you when you have 10 seconds, you have 10 seconds. We're going to turn around and hit the other side. Same exercise in the frontal plane, but if you're on stairs, you're going up on the other side. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, and one. 100% effort, full minute on the clock. Good. Pulling out on that band, keeping the focus up higher than eye level, perfectly parallel in our legs, soft bend in the knees, shoulders plugged down, chin up. Imagine my hands hovering from your shoulder blades and you're trying to reach your back ribs to my hands, engaging the upper back. Lower abs are in. Watch out for overarching your back and rounding your back as you step up. Find somewhere between an arch and a rounded position for your pelvis to stay in with the belly firm in towards your spine. Each inhale as you press those arms overhead, feel your pelvis pull down towards that stair in opposition, lengthening your QL and side body. Each exhale, let your inner thighs pull you and control the descent. 
Inhale, pelvis pulls down in opposition of the arms. Exhale, inner thighs pull you down so that you safely lower with the bend in the knees. Engagement in your adductors as well as the abductors of the legs. Counting you down. Five, four, three, two. Take your 20-second break. Grab water. I'm just going to demo the up and around with the five-pound weight on the chest. So we're going up and around. The weight goes overhead as you step up. Onto center, so we're going from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, back to 12 o'clock to 9 o'clock, up and around. Counting you in. Five, four, three. Hold that five-pound weight at your chest. Two and one. You don't need the loop band, just the five-pound weight. And up and around. Good. Breathing into it. Go, go, go. Taking your time if you need to. Make sure you plant those feet solidly and that your feet are perfectly parallel when you step up. This is a chance to work on your ankle strength, and your alignment for your knees safety. As you press overhead, plug the shoulders down. Again, as you step up and press overhead, pelvis reaches down in opposition. Your obliques engage. Those are your outer um, abdominals, the outer abdominal wall. We want them long and strong. Continue on. Just 20 seconds to go. How quick can you go without experiencing joint pain, without using momentum, Where's your focus of your eyes? Is your chin lifted? Is your gaze a little higher than eye level? Hang in there. Push yourself. Counting you down in five, four, three, two, one. Take your 20-second break. Remember, it's going to go by quick. Get water, any stretch that you need. I'll let you know when you have 10 seconds. And we're at the 10-second mark if you want to get set up. Holding that weight at the chest. Soft bend in the knees before you begin. Check your feet out. Parallel. Counting you in. Five, four, three, two. Here we go. Take it up and over. Same exercise. Up and over. Good. Breathing into it. So we get two sets in of each exercise at 100% effort. Six full minutes of cardio bursting. The National Heart Association recommends somewhere between four and eight bursts with a three-minute warm-up, which we did when we learned the exercises, and then a cool-down. You'll finish up with your flexibility that's safe for your abdominals if you had, um, so we don't have any rectus abdominis splitting, which we don't want. So we have to be careful about how we stretch postnatally. Continue on. Push yourself. Go, go, go. And five, four, three, two, one. Take your break. 20 seconds. Don't do the exercise. I'm just going to demo. So we're going up and down this time, holding the weight in our dominant hand. And then the opposing side will be the leading leg. I'm left-handed. So I'm going right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. I have my red loop band around my wrists and I'm holding the five pound weight. And here we go, taking it up. Arms go up to scaption. So only in line with the chest like a frontal raise. We pull out on that band as we go up. And if you're right-handed, your left leg leads going up and down. If you're left-handed, your right leg leads going up and down. Plug the shoulders. Stay on one side. Don't pass the weight. We're going to do a full minute on this side. And then you'll take your final 20-second break before our final burst. Hang in there. You're doing great. Push yourself. How hard can you go? How fast can you go? Keeping those legs parallel, keeping those knees soft. Just another 15 seconds push. 10 seconds. You've got this. Hang in there. Pull out on that band. Plug the shoulders down. Keep your focus up. Counting you down. Five, four, three, two, one. 20 seconds. Take those 20 seconds. Remember, you're going to switch the weight to your non dominant hand, which means the opposite leg will be leading. So make sure you make that change. We've got 10 seconds before we go again. Don't lock your elbows out when you pull out on that band. Five, four, here we go. Three, two, one. Stepping up, up, down, down. Arms raise as you step up. As you step up, the pelvis reaches down to the floor in opposition, lengthening the QL and side body. As you lower, the inner thighs pull back to help you lower carefully with control. Your legs stay parallel. Your chin stays lifted. Gaze soft. Imagine my hands hovering from your shoulder blades. Go ahead and puff them back, the shoulder blades and back ribs back, feeling that upper back working, doing the motion instead of the front of the shoulders. You're doing great. 
How quick can you go? Elevating that heart rate, using all of your posturally weak muscles, the abductors of the legs, the abductors of the arms, abs, counting you down. And five, four, three, two, one. Great job. Let's come over to the wall. We'll begin with a pec minor stretch, bringing our dominant arm into a cactus. You'll twist away from this arm, leaning forward slightly, but still bracing your abdominals, keeping a neutral pelvis. Subtle twist away from the wall, stepping the same leg, same side of the body as the arm on the wall back. Keep your pelvis profile to the wall, while your torso will do a subtle twist away. You can lean forward a little bit to get deeper into the front of the shoulder and chest while we stretch out the calf muscle here. We're breathing, inhaling laterally into the side body, pulling the belly in towards the spine and lifting in and up on those muscles that stop your stream of pee to condition your transverse abdominus. Bracing those abdominals, we exhale. Again, inhale laterally, two, three, Four, belly in, hold it in, tug in and up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee, contract them, and exhale. Two, three, four. Slowly turning around, switching sides, setting up for your upper body stretch, stepping the same leg as the arm on the wall back slowly. Deep bend in the front knee, equal pressure between the toes, focus of the eyes up higher than eye level. Pelvis is profiled to the wall, torso is subtly twisting away, leaning forward, opening up the shoulder, chest. Let's breathe together. Inhale, two, three, four, five, belly towards the spine, lift in and up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee, contract, and exhale. Again, inhale, two, three, four, belly in, tug up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee, sustain that Darth Vader breath. Inhale, two, three, four, belly towards the spine, contract, lifting in and up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee, fog a mirror with that exhale. <sighs> Slowly turning back to center, take a moment to grab a chair. If the chair is a little short or tall for you, grab a yoga block or bolster. My chair is a little tall for me, so I place the yoga block under my front foot so it's solidly on the ground. My dominant leg goes back first. I come into a supported chair psoas stretch, opening up the back leg's hip flexors. Again, take the same arm as my back leg up in the air to shoulder flexion, plugging my shoulders down, chin up, gaze soft. From here, subtle lateral flexion bending towards the top of the chair, plugging the shoulders down, watching out for leaning forward, but instead a subtle arch back. Chin lifted, gaze soft, and if, if side bending here, even in this subtle bend, is too much, just stay lifted through your abdominals, kegling, and keep the outside arm up in shoulder flexion, holding it there. Deep breaths. Keep breathing here. Again, inhale, two, three, Four, belly to spine, Kegel, sustain it, and exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, Kegel, sustain it for the duration of your One more, inhale, two, three, four, Kegel, sustain it, and ocean breath. Turning around, taking it to the other side, chair psoas stretch, Postural important stretch as you are recovering postnatally. Hold it here. Inhale, two, three, four, Kegel, sustain, and ocean breath. Inhale, two, three, four, shoulders plugged down, Darth Vader. Keep going with that breath. Keep your chin lifted, gaze soft, eyes higher than eye level. Imagine my hands hovering from your shoulder blades. Puff your back ribs towards my hands, engaging the upper back. Press heavily through the front foot on the inner and outer edge, heel and toes. Make sure that the back leg's foot is not solidly planted, that the heel is up and you're just on the metatarsals. One more breath here, setting the chair to the side picking up our foam roller, 
coming into a forearm plank to roll out the front of our thighs. Legs can be hip distance apart if you have knee or back issues, together if not. Point your toes as you're rolling, unless you had flat back posture prior, and you can dorsiflex your feet as you're rolling in this case. So plantar flexion is pointing, looks like this. Dorsiflexion is flexing the toes towards the face, looks like this. Everybody should be plantar flexing unless you are certain you had flat back posture prior to pregnancy. Keep going here. Give me 20 more seconds rolling out that tight fascia. Breathing into it. Beautiful. Inhale, two, three, four. Kegel and exhale, two, three, four. Don't lose the lift of the Kegel, so sustain the Kegel for the duration of your exhale. Let's now rise up onto our knees and we'll grab our black TheraBand, taking it behind our shoulder blades and under our armpits, wrapping it around the knuckles. I'm going to come profile to you for thigh stretch so you see what's happening. So we're going to create a diagonal from the knees out through the crown of the head. Just watch for the first set. I'm going to inhale. I'm going to keep a neutral pelvis somewhere between rounding and arching, brace my abdominals, hinging back, puffing my back ribs into this band to engage my upper back. So we're not doing the yoga pose where your upper back and your low back arch. We're creating a diagonal to stretch out the top of the thighs. Let's do it together. Inhale at the top, no movement except feeling as if the pelvis is being pulled towards the knees. Exhale, let your inner thighs pull you back into your thigh stretch. Hold it here. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale one. And inhale back up to center. Now, if you do have knee or back issues, keep your knees hip distance apart. And they can be a little closer. They shouldn't be all the way together. No matter what, they should, there should be some space. Hip distance apart is ideal. Let's hold. Here we go. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, hinging back. Hold it back. Inhale one, breathe. Exhale, let the inner thighs pull you back a little more. And inhale, pelvis grounds down towards the knees as you come up. Let's hold for two breaths. Exhale, let your inner thighs pull you back. Hold. Inhale, pelvis grounds down. Exhale, inner thighs pull back as you turn your head right and left, right and left. Inhale, pelvis grounds down, staying down. Exhale, inner thighs pull you a little deeper back. And we turn our head. Two, three, four. Inhale, center, all the way back up, standing on the knees. Grab a trigger ball. If you don't have a trigger ball, you can always use your foam roller. Trigger ball would be a lacrosse ball, tennis ball. Also grab your small anti-burst ball to place under the side of the head. Start with your dominant leg as your top leg stacked, and it will drop over, rolling out the posterior tibialis, which is located here. I'll show you where it is. Get into that fascia. Right around the knee can be pretty sensitive if you've had any tracking issues. And with the new load, the increased load from giving birth, there's definitely shifts in your balance and your body, and the knees can take a lot of that on. So we want to reset them. So rolling that posterior tibialis area out, getting into that, and breathing. Now, if you feel like you've gotten that, you can go above the knee, right above the knee medially in this area, in this pocket, and dig into that area. Breathing, being as aggressive as you can to really get some of those knots out. Just another 15 seconds here. Really dig in, push into that. Circular motions, back and forth, or just pressure down. Make sure you're breathing, your abs are still pulling in towards your spine. From here, option to stay where you are. You can go back to the posterior tibialis, stay above the knee, or you can go to the posterior delts. This divot between the tricep and delts, you're going to go in, around that fascia in the tricep and delt area. So it's your bottom arm that you'll be rolling. So plug your shoulders down. Try to not lean back too much, stay stacked. That'll apply a lot of pressure. Your arm can reach forward and back, forward and back. So play around with that. Really allowing yourself to do circular motions. I find that just forward and back, getting into that fascia, there's a lot of tight knots there. So I'm going to breathe into that. And again, you can stay in one area. You don't have to hit an area that doesn't feel like it needs it. So we've hit three areas rolling and you can do this against a wall when you're doing the upper body with your roller or ball if side lying is too much pressure. So you can stand. I'll stand up and show you against the wall. Roll it out. Our final spot, I'll show you standing, but you can do it side lying if you'd like. 
is our lap, which attaches under the armpit. So you can raise your arm up and down like you would in a classroom. It's posteriorly, which means behind and under the armpit. And you'll get into that pocket. You can do it sideline. If you do it sideline, you may want a yoga block or pillow on your bicep to rest your head. So I'll hop down just to show you real fast. So I showed you on the wall. Now I'll show you on the floor with the roller. And the trigger ball, obviously, you put right in that pocket as well. So digging into that area, really getting those knots out, breathing. We'll be here for another 20 seconds. Hang in there. Push yourself through it. So maybe the lats don't need as much attention as the posterior delts, or maybe the posterior tibialis is where you need to direct all your attention, or above the knee, which can help alleviate back and upper knee pain. A couple more breaths. Okay, let's spin around slowly to the other side, starting below the knee with the posterior tibialis. Support your head with that ball block or bolster. Breathing here, evening out the body. For some, their non-dominant side will be more sensitive because there's more tracking issues. For others, if you really overuse your dominant side, it can actually have, you know, some very big knots because of overuse. So there's different reasons why one side is tighter than the other. No need to analyze. Let's just get those knots out. Now, if you feel like you've gotten the posterior tibialis, you can move above the knee medially, or you can stay with the posterior tibialis. Listen to your body. Only you know what you need right now. Keep breathing. Keep rolling. Again, you could have the roller and do this, trigger ball, tennis ball, lacrosse ball is what I'm using as a trigger ball. Now, if you want to move to the posterior delt, remember... The tricep posterior delt is your bottom arm. Plug the shoulders down. Watch out for rocking back. Stack your body, your hips, your torso. Nice and parallel facing me in a line. If that's too much pressure, come to standing and go against the wall and roll it out from a standing position. Again, the foam roller will work from the standing position or the sideline. If you're using it for the sideline, make sure you have a block. I'll show you under your bicep just to rest the head on. Plug the shoulders down so you can breathe into that. Option to move to the lat. Remember the lat is attached under the armpit posteriorly. I'll show you. You can get into that fascia standing using the roller or ball or sideline. And as you do it, you can twist forward and back. Plug the shoulders down. Make sure you're breathing. We don't want to hold the breath. Okay, for our last 30 seconds here, or 15 seconds rather, for our last 15 seconds, let's breathe together. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. One more. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four. Final stretch. Bring your yoga mat by the wall. We're going to do legs up the wall straight just to open up those hamstrings after all that strength work. And depending on your posture prior to pregnancy, the hamstrings could be a posturally tight area that needs some attention as well. So once you get the legs up the wall, take one hand under your low back, check out the pelvic position, see if you can neutralize it. So somewhere between rounding and flattening it into the floor and arching a big mouse hole. So we want that in between position. Make sure you're breathing. Use that breath. And then from here, option to dorsiflex the feet evenly without locking out in the knees. Close your eyes and let's come back to our TVA breathing to recondition the pelvic floor. Okay, one hand on the rib cage, one hand on the belly. We inhale laterally through the nose or mouth into the side body, expanding it. We, our belly is pulled in towards the spine. So we hold the breath. We lift up on the muscles that stop the stream of pee. And now that's an internal lift, like it's a Kegel. You sustain that Kegel and pull in action of your belly for the duration of your exhale. Fog a mirror with it. Again, inhale laterally, belly in, tug in and up on the muscles that stop your stream of pee. Darth Vader. Inhale, two, three, four, contract and sustain. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, contract, sustain it, and exhale, two, three, four. Two more, inhale, two, 
three, four, belly to spine, kegel, and exhale, two, three, four, last one, inhale, two, three, four, belly to spine, kegel, sustain it, and exhale, two, three, four, subtle bend in the knees, slowly make your way off the wall to a comfortable seated position. Breathing, keeping the abs braced as you do this. Whatever this position is, let's roll our shoulders back, keeping our chin up, gaze higher than eye level for five, and four, sitting tall on the top of the sit bones, three, two, and one. Great job. 